Afternoon, Lizzie. Afternoon. Are you doing well with load shedding? Um, yeah. I have load shedding at four o'clock, so I hope I should be able to connect via my my modem or something like that. If I if if it kicks me out at four, just be patient. I will be back if I'm able to connect. Otherwise, then I don't know. Okay, so assignment five, which is your last assignment was opened on the 16th, right? So you should have already had a uh, your first submission to see what it looks like and what type of questions they are asking and so on. And you should have at least tried your first try to see if you do understand the content. So today's session, we're going to do activities relating to study unit 10 and 11, and then Next week, it will be question and answer session. Then we are done with the content. We're done with the assignment and we take a break and then we start working on the exam preparations. Okay. Are there any questions before we start with today's session? Um, the uh, activities that we're doing today are any of them the ex are any of them going to be exercises from our uh, study notes mm. which study notes are you referring to the ones that we didn't do in in um in the previous sessions the ones that i said you can go through them on your own i don't think so i'm not sure it might be it might not be I've got new other activities which might be different to the ones that already I've shared with you. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure. You, you, yeah. If you have went through the activities like every Sunday after every session, we always, I always leave three or five, three or four questions for you to play around as well as to see if you understand because the majority of the time in the session, I'm the one who is doing a whole lot of talking and doing the exercises and showing you how to do it. So by me leaving those five or three uh, questions, it's for, it's for me to say, go and do them. And if you are struggling, let's have a discussion outside of the online session and then we and then I can help you so that we can open up that discussion. But normally you guys you don't do that. Uh, and then when we do the activities, I come with totally new activities because there are so many um uh, uh permutations of questions that you can get because you must always be mindful that with every session that we do it's to prepare you to be able to know the content to get you ready to write the exam, right? It's not about answering this assignment and getting over and done with the assignment because your exam might ask you a totally different question. Well, but if you haven't been exposed to that, well, you won't be able to answer the questions in your exam. And in preparation to that, the hands we do uh, different type of questions that we could find. So today's session as well, you will have a whole lot of activities that you might have not seen before. Some of them you might have already seen them because probably I want to uh, emphasize on one key key issue or something um, uh, with that question as well. But we will see. But I, I'm, I don't keep track of what I used the previous time and what I'm using now because every the activities I created them today. So and I didn't open last week's session to see what is it that we didn't cover. All I just I use my memory to say, but this is a nice question to use. Maybe we can use this for this week. Right. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions? If no questions, uh, remember you need to have your 
um, your statistical table ready. You need to, if you're going to be using the template, make sure that you have the templates ready. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I should get my calculator. Really? Uh, hi, uh, speaking of templates, where can we get them? The templates I've shared them with you. It's either or if you are if you you check on the notes under my UNISA. Uh, let's see if I, I have it open. Um, on the if you go to if you if you have if you have joined the Teams group. When you go to Teams under the files, the templates are there. And I can see that two people have worked through the template on here. Please download them. Don't work through them on online in case you make some changes. It will affect other people that will want to use the template. Go there and download them. Um, <clears throat> and then if you are on my UNISA site, the templates are under templates on the under additional resources. Today's notes, you will find it under the weekly session. Uh, probably it is called, yeah, they, that is today's session. The study unit 10 and 11 activities, and then the notes, the templates, you will find them under templates. And all the other videos that you will see online, you will find the summary notes, but for every Saturday Sundays, the nodes are on here. OK, so okay. those are the two Thank places you. where you can find the things that I'm talking about. Um, OK. All right, thanks. All right. Well, let's get on to it without wasting time. So the first few activities that we're going to do will be from the chi-square test. And then after we've done a couple of them, then we will move into doing the regression one, uh, the regression activities. So here I expect you to also take part in the activities and do the activities with me and, and then we move on. So the first one, you are given the table, consider the following table. Um, which one of the following statement is incorrect? You need to choose the statement that is incorrect. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. If those that are using the template, you can go ahead and use the template to uh, capture the information. Those who do not rely on the template but use their own um, and the other the the options to go through the 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 question and also calculate things manually, we can do that together. Uh, while I'm giving those who are using the template the chance to type uh, the data onto the template, and you need to also be able to select uh, the correct template uh, by checking what is uh, this contingency table in terms of rows and columns, right? Um, because that's what you will need to select the template. So in terms of frequency table, you also, the question is asking you to find the incorrect one. The expected frequencies, remember expected frequency, you're going to calculate it by using your row total, multiply by the column total, divide by the grand total, which is n. And your observed frequencies are always the values that are given to you. The degrees of freedom, remember this is the degrees of freedom for a, for a chi-square test. Therefore, it's number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. And that should give you the degrees of freedom. Finding the critical value, we use the critical values of chi by finding the value of alpha and your degrees of freedom. And they have told you what the your alpha value is. And then the last one is about making a decision. So you just need to always remember that with a critical value of chi-squared, when you make a decision, because the chi-squared 
is an upper tail area a region of rejection. Anything that falls this side, you reject the null hypothesis. So once you have your critical value, you're going to check whether this test statistic, you don't have to go and calculate it. They are telling you that suppose the test statistic is 18.35, and if the critical value is that, where does it fall? Does it fall in the rejection area? And then are you, how do you make a decision? <clears throat> That's all on my side. So the template that you need to be using, it is the chi-square test template. And looking at the rows and columns, you need to be able to choose the right contingency. Is this a three by three or a two by three? or a two by three contingency table, or is this a two by two contingency table, or is this a four by two contingency table? So, but you need to go and select the correct contingency table. And based on this, I will say we already have the data captured. So you can go ahead and answer the question. Let me know when you have an answer. I have an answer for number one. OK. I mean, if you are done with the exercise and have an answer of exercise one, where it says which one of the following statement is incorrect, which is the statement one, two, three, four, and five. Once you, once you have the incorrect answer, then I will know that you have went through all five statements and you have your incorrect statement. No. Five is an inc incorrect, Lizzie. Okay, so you are done with actually with the question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Others? Are yes. Still I busy. Think, uh, I can't. Five is the incorrect answer. Five is in the incorrect answer, so it means you are also done. Okay, so let's look at each and every statement. Since I think two people, how many are we online? Unless someone is still busy. Okay, so let's look at each and every statement. Statement number one says the expected frequencies for buyers above 45 and bought a medium car is 39.6. So you're going to take the row total of above 45 and the column total of medium. So the row total is 120 times 99 no. divided by 300. So 120 times 99 equals divide by 300 equals 39.6. And those who are are using the template that is 39.6 as well because it is 45 and medium that's where the expected value is which means option one is correct observed buyer under 30 and bought a large a large car under 30 and large car is 34 which is correct the degrees of freedom, how many rows do we have? We have three. Three rows, how many columns? Three as well. Three columns, three minus one is two. Three minus one is two, two times two is four. So our degrees of freedom is four. The critical value at alpha, of 0, 0,05. Therefore, we need to go and find the critical value on the table. 
for 0, 0, 0,05 and 4. So when we go to the table, this is the critical values. We go to the upper tail area and look for 0, 0, 0,05 and 4, where they both meet. That is the critical value, which is the same. Which is the same as 9,488, which means all that are correct. Suppose that our test statistic is 18.35. H0 cannot be rejected. So here they are telling us if we know that our critical value is 9,488 here, and they say the test statistic is 18.35, therefore it falls in there rejection area and the statement will be incorrect because it says we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So that is correct. We are rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is the incorrect answer. And that's how you will answer some of the Hello. question in case they give it to you like this in the exam or in your assignment. Yes. Oh, I thought there was a question. Mm -hmm. Somebody's mic is unmuted. I don't know who. Okay, so let's look at number two. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about the chi-square test of independence between the two variables? The test statistics has R. We're looking for the incorrect, right? That's what the question is asking. The test statistic has R minus one, C minus one degrees of freedom, where R is the number of rows and C is the number of columns. Number two, the observed frequencies for each cell is equals to the row total times the column total divided by n, where n is the sample size. Number three, the two variables are qualitative. Number four, the null hypothesis is that the two variables are independent of each other. Number five, if the observed and the expected frequencies for each cell are equal, then the test statistic will be equal to zero. Which one of these five statement is incorrect? Figure number. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Four or five? I think five is. You think five? Yes. Somebody's phone is ringing. Five is correct. Remember your chi square test says they say if you observe, then you expected frequencies are equal to zero. If this was a, a two by two table, right? There you have your rows, row one, row two, column one, column two. If this was zero, 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 therefore, and they also say if your expected frequencies are also equals to zero, so I'm going to write my expected frequencies here as zeros. So you will say zero minus zero squared divided by zero plus zero minus zero squared divided by zero plus zero minus zero squared divided by zero plus zero minus zero squared divided by zero, which the answer will be equal to zero. And it is correct because they say if they are all equal, Number I'm I'm just Number making an, an example, right? 
I think number two is incorrect because um, it, it has to be divided by the total, not the size, the sample size. No, 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 no. It is correct. The only thing that is not correct is this. What is supposed to be? The observed value are the values that you are given. Something that is not given, you need to calculate it by using your row total times your column total divided by your n, which is your sample size, which is your grand total. What is that? The expected frequency. It's your expected frequencies. Hence, number two, you had it right. It is the incorrect one but it's supposed to have said the expected frequencies of each cell it's equals to that okay um and and also here i've, I've just used a lame example in terms of uh, in terms of zeros let's if i change the bottom one let's not use zeros because then it, it as if like i'm saying the values should be equals to zero. Just for an example, again, on the second last one, in case you get something like this in the exam, if this was one, two, three, four, and our expected values were one, two, four, and three, the one at the bottom are our expected value. So we're still going to say one minus one divided by one. 2 minus 2 because they say they are equal to each other, right? The expected and the frequent, the observed are equal to one another. And 3 oh, minus yes. 3 is divided by 3. And 4 minus 4 divided by 1 minus 1 is 0. Divide by 1, any number divide, 0 divided by any number is the same as 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. You cannot divide zero by any number. It will stay as zero. Three minus three is zero. The same, zero, zero, right? And the answer here will be equals to zero. So your if your expected value and your observed value are the same, therefore it means your test statistic will also will be equals to zero. So that is correct. We're using qualitative data. And the two and the null hypothesis we always state independent, right? This we just dealt with it in the previous one. It's your degrees of freedom is stated by the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Okay, moving on. Unless if you have another question. Let's move to the next question. Many companies use well-known celebrities as spokesperson in their TV advertisements. A study was conducted to determine whether the brand awareness of female TV viewers and the gender of the spokesperson are independent. Each in a sample of 300 TV viewers was asked to identify a product advertised by a celebrity spokesperson the gender of a person and whether or not the viewer could identify the pro product was recorded. The number in each category are given below. The male celebrity and the female celebrity and also their identified product and could not identify product. Referring to the table, at 5% level of significance, the critical value is uh, the critical value of the test statistic is. So here, they just want you to find the critical value. You need to go find your degrees of freedom, which is number of row minus one, times number of columns minus one. Um, how many rows, how many columns? And we substitute. Two, two. You need to also identify what is your alpha value. So there are two columns. 
and there are two rows. And what is your degrees of freedom? Two minus one is one. Two minus one is one. One times one is one. So our critical value will be 0, 0,05, which is our alpha value, and the degrees of freedom of one. Then you go to the table. What is your critical value? One. And 0, 0,05. It's 3,84 for one. Uh, the table that they used had four decimals. We're using the one with three decimal. But number one is the correct answer. In a contingency table with nine rows and two columns, how many degrees of freedom are there for this chi-square test? How many degrees of freedom are there? Uh, there are eight degrees of freedom. Eight degrees of freedom because we are told that there are nine rows and there are two columns. Nine minus one is eight times two minus one is one, which makes it eight, which is option C. To perform a chi-square test of independence, you require, what do you require? The degrees of freedom. Um, you might be right. What, what do you, what else do you require? A test of con contingency table. Yes. All the statements, they are. And the level of significance. <laughs> yes. I think, yeah. <laughs> A test of independence it's, it's a it's a test of contingency table because it's a cross tabulation test. You will need the level of significance. We do find that if we are making a decision, we use a degrees of freedom. You <coughs> the distribution of a chi square test is not. Probably this question, they probably they wanted to say what is uh, what is what is not required to do a test for independence because the chi square test is a positive risk is positively skewed, right? Because you can see from the distribution that it is a positive skewed distribution. So Probably the question, yeah, something is wrong with this question entirely because all this statement one, three, four, and five are related to how you perform your text. Only number two is not. So I'm going to change the statement to say <clears throat> to perform a chi square test, you do not require. 
the distribution to be negatively skewed. That's the only thing that is relevant to this because all of the other statements we use two or more nominal scale because if I have two nominal variables, male and gender, uh -uh, male and, and type of car, both of them are nominal. Uh, you need the degrees of freedom and the level of significance to find the critical value to make a decision or to generate a region of rejection. And this is a, a, a test for a contingency table. You need to also be able to put your data into a contingency table in order for you to be able to calculate your expected values. So only the only thing that is not correct here is number two. Let's go to number six to test if the absence of workers from their job occurs at a higher rate on rainy days than on non-rainy days. A company took a sample of 400 days and the results are as follows. So they tested the weather and the absenteeism and they recorded there were 170 employees or workers who they did this. A statistician wants to test the independence or to infer whether the incidence is higher on rainy days. Higher on rainy days. Right? So this is a contingency test. So you should be able to know how to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, but that is um, uh, the step one, that is, you need to know that. You need to know how to find the critical value. You need to know how to calculate the expected value. You need to know how to uh, calculate the test statistic. So here they didn't ask you about the test statistic. Those who are using the template, choose the right template. So this is a, what type of a contingency table is this? It's a, Three three by by two. Two. Uh, it's a two by two table. So you will have to go to a two by two because you have rainy and no rainy. Yes and no. Don't count the totals. So it's a two by two contingency table. And those who are using the the uh, the template, you just need to fill in the observed values, 5, 10, 55, and 100 into the, the table. Change the names, rainy and yes and no, and then answer the table. There is your expected, there is your test statistic, but the question was not asking you about the test statistic. Those who are calculating manually, you are with me, R minus one times C minus one, what is your observed? What is the expected? Expected frequency, you will find it by using the row total. Times the column total. Divide by the grand total, which is N. <clears throat> so you will take the row total of rainy the column total of absence is yes, it's 15, so it's 60 times 15, divided by 170. The critical value, you just need to go and find your chi-square critical value, which is your alpha, and the degrees of freedom. You would have calculated what the degrees of freedom is there. Then you also need to know how to state your null hypothesis correctly. Be looking for the correct statement.
Are we winning? Yes. Are we done? Okay. Let's deal with what we are able to see in front of us, and then we will go to the table later on. So we're looking for the incorrect statement. What is the degrees of freedom? How many rows, how many columns? We already established that there are two, two, two rows two. and two columns. Therefore, the degrees of freedom is one. That will be incorrect. What is the observed value for non-rainy and no absence? It's, one, it's 100, 100, not 100.3. So that is incorrect. What is the expected frequency of rainy and absence? Where is rainy? <laughs> rainy and absence is five. Nope, it's the row total. 60 multiplied by the column total. 15 divided by 170. What do you get? Sixty times fifteen. Sixty times fifteen. Divide by one seventy. Five comma three. Which is not equals to five. And number five. How do we state the null hypothesis? Do we say independent or dependent? Independent. Always null hypothesis states that independent. So that is incorrect. Critical value, our alpha. Our alpha value, they told us it's 0, 0,01. And the degrees of freedom is one. So let's go and check the table where one and 0, 0,01, our critical value is 6,635. 6,63. That is the correct answer that we are looking for. So let's look. Yes. Can you explain number two again for me? I think I'm a bit lost on number two. At number two, they say observed value. Observed value is equals to? It's the value you see on the table. Oh, the hundred. Is it the hundred? It's hundred, yes. And there they told you that the observed value is hundred comma three. But we oh, know that okay. it's just hundred. Oh, okay. That is why also yeah. on the expected value, because the answer on the expected value is 5,29. It's not 5. It's 5,29411747. It's not 5. It's bigger than 5. Right? So that's why it's not 5. 5 is the 
observed value that you see on the table. Okay, let's look at one more question and then, oh, but this is the same as the one. No, it's not the same. It is the same. Did we answer this type of a question before? It looks like, oh, we were looking at the degrees of freedom there. We're not there. looking at the critical yes, so we were, Yes, so we can look at this. It's almost the same as the previous one, so I'm not going to calculate what the degrees of freedom is. We did establish that. So you need to just go and look for 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom of 8. So let's go to the table. Let me remove all these other values. 0, 0,01 and 8. And the answer is 2,09. And that's how you will find the critical values. Okay. Let me see. I had additional questions that you can go and do on your own. This is one of them. I think this is almost similar to what we did in class, probably. We did touch something like this. There are no values here. You just need to make sure that you populate the values before you populate them on the if you are using the template and answer the question. Here is another question. On this one, also pay attention. If you're using the uh, template, you should be able to get the numbers in the brackets, which are your, they told you what they are. They are your expected values, right? Because you are calculating a chi-squared test statistic. It's very long. If you take this, this is a two by, two by three column. So you will go to the contingency table, two by three, and change the values P and Q and change the values A, B, C, and just capture 55, 40, and 79 onto the table, 34, 56, and 100 onto the table. All they're asking you is the, the last part, the test statistic. The value you will find here, it should be your answer. If you're going to calculate manually, they've given you your expected values, so they don't expect you to calculate the expected values. So you just substitute into the formula. We know that the formula is your observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So what they want you to do is just take 55 minus 42.54, square the answer, divide by 42. 0.54 plus 40 minus 45.89 squared divided by 45.89 plus 79 minus 85.57 squared divided by 85.57. Plus, and then we go to the bottom. 34 minus 46.46 squared divided by 46.46 plus 56 minus 50.11 squared divided by 50.11 plus um, 100. Minus 93.43 squared divided by 93.43. And you will find the answer. Once you have worked out all of them and add them together, you will find the test statistic. That's all what they want you to do. This is another one you can go through. I think we did one of this in class. I'm not sure. It might be this. Some of them, they look familiar. So yet you just answer the question, calculate the totals. If you are using the template, you just capture these values. The total will be calculated for you, but you just need to make sure that you know how to state the null hypothesis and the alternative, how to calculate the ex expected and how to calculate the degrees of freedom. The next one, they're asking you to calculate the test statistic. Oh, 
and the critical value. You just need to calculate the find the critical value. This table it's it is a three by two table, and you just calculate the critical value. After you have your critical value and your test statistic, you can then just come and do your decision and make your decision. Because here you will have your critical value and you will find out whether your test statistic that you calculated, whether it's zero or one, where does it fall? Does it fall on this side or that side of the critical value based on also by based on the critical value that you would have selected from here? Then you make a decision whether you are rejecting or you do not reject. The last one, this is automatically excluded because we don't state the, sub, the, the statement by saying accept or, or, or statements like that. Okay, so on this one as well, you just need to state your critical value, find the critical value and select which one is that. Or you can say, based on the critical values that you're looking at, whether when the level of significance decreases, does the critical value decrease? And you can also look at this. When your critical values are decreasing, does these values decrease as well, or are they increasing? But that is something that you need to figure out. Okay. And you need to be able to calculate the test statistic which is also the same, making a decision. Okay, let's move to uh, the regression. And remember, if my line cuts off, uh, wait for me. Maybe I might be able to reconnect. If not, I will send them a WhatsApp if I'm unable to connect because of low connectivity on my side. But other than that, let's continue and look at regression and correlation exercises also you have a template that you you can use if i open the template also it's given there with some information in terms of how you use the template correctly without affecting some of these calculations because most of these calculations are automated so let's let's look at the exercises so the first exercise is a sample of eight observation of variable X and Y are shown below with the values of X and the values of Y. And they gave us the summation values. Um, we can use them or we don't have to use them. Which of the following statement is incorrect? The first one, the coefficient of correlation is 0, 0,09. The coefficient of determination is positive. The best line is y hat is equals to minus 2.119 plus 30.155 times x. There is a strong negative relationship. The results in the connection with the above variables are reliable. So in terms of the equation, y hat is equals to b0 plus B1, so it means we need to go and be able to use this information and calculate the slope and the intercept to check. We need to go and find out if R is equals to that or R squared is positive. Some of this are straightforward. So if we using the template, go to the template, we have Make it smaller so I can be able to capture the data. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got two additional information. Just go to B, highlight everything that I don't need until Y squared, and delete. And I must move it up, and everything is intact. I just keep. The values. So I'm going to start by putting in my x values, which is 5, go down 3, go down 7, go down 9, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then go to the next one, which is my y. 
and 14. And you can only get this right if you practice, because if you don't practice, then you're going to struggle when you answer the question either in the exam or in your assignment as well. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize it so I can go to the left. And I can also double check this value. So they say x squared is 284. x squared is 284. I have the same answer. y squared is 2990. The sum of y squared is 2930. The sum of x and y is 725. Okay. So looking at the questions, let's start with number one. Number one says, let's make it bigger. Number one says the coefficient of correlation is minus 0 0.99. A is my coefficient of correlation. I can make it even less decimals so that it reflects the same. So it's the same. R squared is minus 0, 0,09. That is correct. Your, your R, sorry, R, which is the coefficient of correlation, is correct. Your coefficient of determination, which is R squared, will be positive because if you look at the answer as well, is positive. I make it two decimal, it's positive, it's 0, 0,98, which if you take 0, minus 0, 0,99 and multiply it by, uh, by itself twice, you will get 0, 0,998, which is positive. So number two is also correct. Number three, it says the best line fit is, uh, I just need to remove this plus sign here, uh, the is 30 minus 2.99 x. So it means this is incorrect. So the only incorrect answer here is number three. Because the equation should read our slope B1 is 2.9, 2.119. And here it's written as the intercept. Remember always, the slope is the value that multiplies with the x, right? So that is the incorrect one. Uh, there is a very negative strong relationship. Yes, there is a negative strong relationship because your r is minus 0 0.99. And the results based on that, we can say the results are, is, are reliable. I think this one question we did do in class. I'm not sure. It sounded familiar. Anyway, your question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about some of the concepts of linear regression? Number one. I just want to make sure that my, my modem is on so that the connection when it bumps up is... All right. Okay. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one. A correlation coefficient of 0, 0,1 indicates a weak positive relationship between two variables. Number two, the least square method estimate, which is your regression line or the regression equation, by minimizing the errors of your sum square. SSE. Number three, the coefficient of co uh, correlation or the correlation coefficient always takes the value 
between zero and one. Number four, the coefficient of determination can be interpreted as the percentage of the total sum square that can be explained using the estimated regression equation. Remember, the coefficient of determination, R squared, can be calculated as SSR divided by SST. The slope and the intercept of the estimated regression equations are Let me know if I'm back. Yes, you're back on, Lizzie. Uh, you must let me know if I cut off um, my bar on my phone. It's two bars, so I'm connected. It might be a low connection. Okay, so number five. The slope and the intercept of the estimated regression equation are estimated using the least square methods. Which one of this statement is incorrect? Okay, let's go through each statement. Number one, is that statement correct? Strength and direction. You still remember? In terms of the strength, or oh, sorry, in terms of the direction, we refer to negative or positive. So the value here is it negative or positive? And in terms of the strength, we look at the number. If it's between, uh, if it's one, it's a perfect. If it's between 0 0.99 and 0 0.79, we say it's strong. If it is between 0 0.39 and 0 point, if it's between 0 0.79 and 0 0.5, we say it is, or is it 0 0.39? We say it is moderate, or oh, yes, if it is between 0. 7, 9, and 0 0.5, we say it is moderate. And when it is zero between 0 0.39 and 0, we say it is weak. And when it's 0, we say there is no relationship. So based on that, is that correct? Yes, that is correct, because it's 0 0.1 will refer to a weak relationship between the old two variables. The least square measure, we it's used to minimize the errors. Remember, we also say in terms of your total variation is your regression plus your errors that are, you cannot explain. So the equation for the least squares, which is your regression line, actually it is y hat is equals to b0 plus b1x plus errors. So we, by using this equation, we try to minimize those unexplained errors as well. Uh, 
And then number three, it says the coefficient of correlation and we just spoke about it. So we, we know that the coefficient of correlation is between one and minus y. Only the coefficient of determination is between uh, zero and one which makes this an incorrect statement that is correct because I gave you the the answer to that. Um, and the slope and the we can use the least square measures estimate. We, you remember the sum square measures, the summation, the, they are also called the least square, uh, the estimated uh, values. Okay. So the only qu question that is incorrect is option three. Let's see if you know how to read a scatter plot if given the data. So consider the sample data below and develop a scatter plot. Which one of these scatter plots uh, from A to F describes this data that we have. The first thing you can do is do a process of elimination based on the, the x axis and the y axis. Like, for example, if I look at my scatter plot A, I will use that one as an example. If I look at A, a says I'm starting at 20 on the x-axis and I'm ending up at 35. If I go to my x-axis, it starts at 18 and it ends at, at 40. So therefore it means there are some limitations on this x-axis. Already I can do a process of elimination from there. That is how you can start start off. The other thing is by picking one or two points. So let's say, for example, if I come to this scatter plot, I could say I need to go to point 34. So 34 should be somewhere here. And I need uh, my Y value to be 15. And I go to my Y value. If you, if you see on the Y axis, it starts at 30. Therefore, that cannot be. That is one option that I'm giving you. I'm not carrying on. You tell me which one of these options represents this data that we have. Is it C, F, E, O, D, or C, D, E, F? It's G. Others, do you also agree that it's D? Yes. Okay, we can look at um, the other ones. So let's look at this. Um, the uh, F, oh, sorry, C. Let's look at C. C, um, C has 50. There is a point that has X of 50, and I can see that there is no X of 50. Therefore, C is eliminated by that. And F, F ends, all the dots ends at 35. I know that I've got a point that on the X exists that needs to correspond with 40. There is nothing there, so that can be eliminated. E, there is a point at 40, right? At least uh, my minimum starts at 18. So if this is 20, so probably 18 should be somewhere. 19, 18, let's say here in the middle is 15. There, there is no 15 and those points 
looks like they are on 15 or so. Therefore, process of elimination on that one. Uh, if you look at this, there is 40. And the minimum one was 18 and 30. There is 30. There is, therefore, it means that one and that one. Put 10 and 40. So D is the correct one. So that's how you will find your, your values or your scatter plot by using the method of elimination or you can look at each point and try and map each one of them. Pick one or two points, the first two points and see if when you map them, you are able to identify which graph they correspond with. Okay. Look at Lindsay. Yes. Lindsay, is it mm. possible to go to the previous question? There's another which? one that called the previous one before this one. This one on the correlation, the first point. Mm. I think um, I read on the textbook where it was saying uh, <clears throat> if R is close to zero, it indicates a little linear relationship. And then if it's, it ranges between zero and zero, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, it's a weak linear. So I got a little bit confused with this one. But this is 0 0.1. It's not zero, right? OK. So I also get the, the same confusion because, okay. because it, it's, it's, point it, zero. It's, close, it's still close to zero. And, and under weak uh, linear relationship, it's, it, it starts from 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. Yeah, that's yeah, the other yeah. thing. closest the, to zero. Yeah, that's the other the, the other thing um as well um to be considerate of when you look at this because different temp different table or different textbooks and different things are explained differently in terms of the relationship. So when it's zero, we say there is no relationship, right? When it's zero, when it's equals to zero, we say there is no relationship. If it's anything between zero and 39, we say it's a weak relationship. So it should not, or let's, when we say zero, between zero and nine, yeah, we're referring to anything less, uh, greater than zero. Or equals to 39, equals something to like 39. that. Something like that. So there's no such thing as close to zero. Because yeah, it says here, yeah, if close, close to zero, close to zero can zero. be something like 0 0.05. What is 0 point, let's say 0 0.05, 0 0.01. 0 0.08. Those are close to zero, right? Sometimes you can say that. Those are, you it's up to you how you will define that. But in terms of all these statements that are here, if you go through them, each and every one of them, you will see that intentionally your lecture says this 0 0.1 is a weak relationship. There is still okay. some sort of a linear relationship there, but it's very, very weak. Because if you take this 0 0.1 and square it, if you take the square, Point, point one because I lost my connectivity. I can't use my calculator. Now. Uh, what is what zero point one squared? It will be point one squared, which will be zero comma zero 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 one. So if I take this zero and I convert it to R squared, it will be 0, 0,01, which tells me that there is a 0 0.01 chance of the X or the, the total variation in the independent variable that is 
assumed to be attributed to the X variables, right? But you can see that that is very, very, like to a point where we can even just say there is no influence between the two values, the X and the Y. The, um, your, your y, the total variation in Y are not attributed by the variation in, in X in terms of that, because it's very, very small. And some books might refer to this as no relationship in terms of your R's, your coefficient of correlation when you look at the relationship as compared to when it is 0, 0,15 or when it's 0, 0,35 or things like that. So you just need to pay attention to the statements given and okay. make assumptions based on that. All right. Okay, so let's look at the next question. You are tasked with investigating the relationship between the speed reading speed y and the age x of a primary and high school learners using a simple linear regression. Which one of the following statements about the investigation is incorrect? Number one, the age is dependent. Number two, the estimated regression equation will take a form. The reading speed is equal B1 times H plus B0, where B1 is the slope and B0 is the intercept. Number three, the reading speed of a quantitative discrete variable. Oh, the reading speed is a quantitative discrete variable. Number, number four, if the correlation coefficient is negative, there is a negative relationship between reading speed and the age. Which one of these statements is incorrect? One, two, three, and four. Let's hear. Is it number one? Is number one correct or incorrect? Correct. Do you know what is an independent variable and a dependent variable in terms of your linear regression? What do we put on the linear, on the independent side? We put the X variables. What do we put on the dependent side? We put the Y variable because your independent variable is your input variable. It is that variable that you use to predict what your output will be. Or your estimate will be so number one correct or incorrect it's incorrect it's incorrect incorrect and since number one is incorrect we can also always estimate that the reading speed which is our y is equals to our slope and our intercept, which they wrote it correctly there, right? Um, we could, they could have written it this way as well, B1, H, because H is our X, remember? They could have written it in vice versa. And we know that the reading speed, um, they didn't say it, yeah, but the reading speed is a quantitative variable. So if they say it's a discrete variable, we can just assume that it's a discrete quantitative variable then. 
if the correlation coefficient is negative, for sure, the direction will state also that it is a negative linear relationship between the, the variables. Some of the questions are just as straightforward, but some they might look tricky. You just need to remember all these other things that you have learned as well. I see we have eight minutes and we can look at more questions. Uh, I'm not going to go through this because I think this one we used in. Oh, no, we used it as a practice with our calculator. Let's let's use the template to answer this question. We'll use the template. So in terms of the template, I need to go and clean up. I know that we had eight variables here. How many? One, two, three, four, five. We have five. So in order for me to keep only five, one, two, three, four, five, I need to delete all these other rows. So you highlight from B up to Y squared, the values that we want to take out. And we delete up. And we can just capture the values. And we have four, two, six, four, and three. I don't have a calculator online now, so unfortunately I cannot demonstrate using a calculator, but you can watch the previous videos because we did use the same uh, question in the previous video to demonstrate how to use your calculators. Seven, six, four, three, two, you just double check if I have the values correctly. Four and five, two and three, six and seven, four and six and three and five. And we can go to the. All right, to just get. Other values. OK, so we can we looking for. Which one of the following statement is incorrect and. If I go to the model that they gave us, so because this is positive, I just need to put a plus sign right here in the middle. Look and do. Okay. Bring it on the wrong side. Should be on that column. Even if we removed it. Okay, so say this. So, which is the same as that? Y hat is equals to one point. Okay, it's two decimals. We can also reduce it to two decimals. Also, on here, we can reduce it to two decimals. So, it's 1.66 plus 0 0.39, which is the same as what we have here. So it means we can answer any of these questions. Our data is correct. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? But before we answer that question, I just want to also advise you to write the equation. Yeah, so that if any way they refer to things. On. The options, you should be able to know what you're talking about. Yeah, inter. Intercept and the slope. OK, so let's answer the question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? X is or is correct. X is in the X is dependent. Is that correct or incorrect? It's correct. Ah. Huh? We just dealt with this just now, 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 now. Number one is incorrect. 
because it says X is dependent. X will always, X all, from now, from today, you will always remember this. X is always in the pen independent. X is always independent. I'm not even writing independent right now. X is always in the pen independent. Y is always dependent. So that will be incorrect. So as long as X is incorrect, the way they labeled it, therefore it means Y will also be incorrect. For X is equals to eight, the estimated value is equals to 9.1. All what you need to do is take your calculator and just substitute the value of eight onto the formula and calculate 0 0.93 times eight. Do you get nine comma? comma one. I will use my formula from here. Yes, it's nine comma one. Times eight is equal to Nine comma one one one. Yes, true. Sure. Nine, nine, nine comma one. one. So that is correct. And here it says the slope is one comma six six. If I go there, what is my slope? My slope is zero comma nine three. So if I go here on this formula, oh, what we don't see on the entire Excel now since I've minimized it. You should be able to see the the slope is zero comma nine three. Yeah, they say it's one comma nine and uh, one comma one six. But also, you didn't even have to go and use the template because all the information you need is here. So, which is incorrect. The intercept, therefore, it means it will also be incorrect because they swapped the values around. And that's how you will answer some of these questions. So, let's look at the next question. So the next question also looks exactly the same here. They didn't give you the equation. They gave you the sum square measures. You can use the sum square measures equations if you want to calculate the intercept, the slope, the regression, because the slope is given by your sum of X and Y minus the sum of X, the sum of Y divided by N. Divide by the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divide by n. You can just take these values and substitute into this formula. The intercept is given by your mean uh, minus v1 times the mean of x. So that will give you your intercept, right? Um, Therefore, it means after you have calculated the slope, you can substitute the mean by taking 122 divided by how many there are. Minus the answer for the slope times uh, 39 divided by how many there are and get the mean of that. And then the regression line, you just need to make sure that you substitute the values of your intercept and your slope correctly because this is B0 and this is B1. X. The answer you get from number one and number two should substitute correctly into that. As you can see here, they say this is the slope, but it's written on the intercept on the formula. So you just need to make sure that you know what you're doing. The coefficient of correlation also you can calculate it by using the summation formulas, which the coefficient of correlation is your sum of X and Y minus the sum of x, the sum of y, divide by n. Sometimes they don't do that. They don't divide by n. They, they multiply by n here, and they don't divide by n. They divide by your sum of x, 
sum of y square root, uh, something like that. Your n times n times that, which this, uh, if I if I take it out, I don't have to use that. I can use the square root of your n times the sum of your x squared minus the sum of x. Something like that. I can't even remember the formula. I don't want to give you the, the wrong formula, but it's the summation formula. Otherwise, you can use your template. Those who are using a template, you could have been done long time as well by substituting the values. So. so we have four, six, eight, nine, and twelve. Something I didn't include correctly. Six, eight, nine, and twelve. And then the y values we have twelve and sixteen and twenty five and thirty and thirty nine. And already you would have the answers that you are looking for. Okay, so you could answer the question. Your intercept, which is B0, is minus three minus 3.29. If I look at this, it says it's 3.5, which is incorrect. Your slope, it's 3.54. It says the slope is minus 3.21, which is incorrect. We're looking for the correct one. The regression line, so these values, I can see that they have written them vice versa, right? So my equation should look like this, should say y hat is equals to minus 3.24, uh, because this is 2, 4. Uh, they have 2, 1, but it's still almost more or less the same thing. Minus 2.34, 2, 4, plus 3, 4. So it means this equation might be correct because they would have calculated this manually not using the formulas as we have. Uh, the coefficient of correlation is 0, 0,99. You can see the answer there is 0, 0,99, which is that. Therefore, the coefficient of determination is 0, 0,9. We can also double check that. It says it's 9,8. Going back. So you can see that that is not correct. Even if you take your calculator and take 0, 0,99 squared, you won't find 0, 0,9950 as well. So that is incorrect. And it says if you substitute into this formula, the value of x is equals to 10, you will get 35. So let's do that. Remember that we substitute 10. And the answer is 32, which is not 35, which is not correct. Even if you take this equation there, uh, minus 3.29 plus 3.54 times, uh, times 10, it will not give you 35. Because you will be subtracting from 3.25 times 10, it will be 35.4. Uh, minus 3 should give you 32 point some number. So it cannot be 35. 
because 35.4 would be will be this if this was zero. So that will be incorrect. The only correct statement there would have been option number three. Okay. So some of the questions that you might get in the exam or in your assignment looks like this. So you need to be able to know how to do the summations. Um, remember the summation of xi, it means you adding all these values. The total, it's your total, right? Your total, this will give you the summation of i's. This will give you the summation of y's, right? That will be the summation of y i's. If you want to calculate the summation of i minus the mean squared, let me go back to the temp the the template. So on the template, we do have uh, some calculations like this, but these are not the calculations that you can use to answer that question. So let's say, for example, you want to answer this question where it takes the y value. It should be the same as taking your see like here I have the summation of y i minus uh, the mean of y. So you will need to be able to go and calculate your mean of y the same way as you would be able to calculate the mean of x. And <clears throat> All what you will do. So let's assume that the mean of you would have calculated it here. Actually, let's put it this way: you would have calculated it here. There is the mean of x on your data. So if you come here and and substitute all these values by your x and y values there. Uh, actually, I'm I'm lying. I already calculated them. These are the values that I'm talking about. So, sorry, my bad. I I forgot about them. So, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Oh, come on. So this is the sum of x minus the sum of mean. They, the sum of x minus the sum of mean times the sum of y is times y minus the mean of y, which is this. It will give you that answer there. That part will give you this summation answer on there. This sum of x i minus the mean squared. Uh, yeah, it's this second column on E. It is your x minus the mean of x squared. You can see there the sum of it, 36, would give you the answer for that. Or probably let me do it for you. And then you can go and practice. So I need to know how many values are in here. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10. At the moment, I have 5, right? So I need to add 10 more. So on B, I must just, I'm gonna add three and then add two. Insert, down, and then I must just add two more. And I should have add rows, insert, down. Remember, I need to be able to take all the calculations that were done previously and take them through. So let's capture the data. Let's take it down. Let's start with the X first. X is 10, 15, 9. 10, 11, 11, 18, 12, 12, and 10. And let's go capture the Y's. So, okay. 178, 
155 207. I didn't check my okay, I've got enough battery. 208 184 and 224 and 196. I hope I'm capturing everything correctly. And two four six and one six eight. Let's double check our values. Ten one seventy eight, two seventy four, one fifty five, and nine, ten and what two oh seven, eleven and two oh eight, eleven and one eighty four, thirteen and two two four, twelve and one ninety six, twelve and for 246 and 10 and 168. There we go. So I have all the values. I can just minimize this. I'm not looking for the sum of X, just looking for the squares. Okay, so because these are summations, summations means totals. You all agree, right? Summations are totals. So let's see. The first one, it says the summation of the X values. We know that it is the sum of all the X values. is 113. There it is. Number two, it says it's the summation of your X observation minus the mean squared, which is that X observation minus the mean squared, which is the square root. As you can see there, I'm squaring it, square. And that is the answer, which is the summation, which is correct. And the next one it says is the summation of your X minus the mean times your Y minus the mean, which is that part, the last one. It says it should be 511, and that is correct. Number four, it says B0, it's six point. Nine one, we can go to the B zeros. Let's remove the ink. B zero is one minus one point four nine one, which is not correct. So it's not correct. And B one is eighteen point one nine, which is correct. If I make it three decimals, it's the same. So the only incorrect answer here is four. Now, answering the question, which one of the calculated quantities from one to five is incorrect? It's only number four, which is option three. And that's how you will answer some of these questions. I know that we are 50, uh, 50 minutes above time. You should be able to interpret your R and your R squared and be able to calculate and move by versa. You should be able to make your estimates. They gave you the age is 15, so therefore your X is 15. Calculate it and find out what is the, the value of Y. You should be able to interpret uh, your, your R squared as well. And you should be able to interpret the slope, which is this. It is a minus. Remember, minus means decrease. So you should be able to to state it in relation to, to the values, which one is the incorrect one or the correct one. I think that is, how do you interpret the slope? Also interpret your correlation coefficient, and you should be able to interpret what the coefficient of correlation is or also uh, the interpretation of your de coefficient of determination. Or you should be able to take the equation and substitute where you see X and see if that is the correct one. Because they say the estimated uh, when it's 17, so age is 17, the answer, your speed will be 298. You should be able to do that. You should be able to look at this and make your conclusion about about the correlation and remember you you'll be looking for the incorrect value 
you should be able to interpret the slope, which is that value. What does that mean? It's positive. What does that mean? Remember, negative decrease, positive increase. You should be able to interpret your value of your R squared. <clears throat> the same thing on this one and on this one as well. You are given the score of 15. You just need to substitute it into that value. So almost similar questions in different ways, right? <clears throat> and I can't even um, include this. You need to calculate the coefficient of correlation. You can use the sum square measure formulas to calculate R, or you can use your, te your template, your R value on the template. It's just that value that you will see on there. Same thing. They'll do this. So there are so many other practice activities that you can follow before you write your assignment and for your preparation for your exam. Are there any questions or comments or queries before we end? Lizzie, just for the exam purposes. I'm not sure if you've answered this question already, but will they allow us to use these templates that you've provided for chi squared and regression? You should be able to use them provided the type of the system you're using for proctoring, right? Yeah. Yes. So if the system you are using for proctoring, it doesn't allow you to move from one view to the other, then you can use the template. You have to use the formulas. But if it doesn't, you can continue and use the template because if you are able to toggle between two screens mm -hmm. or minimize your, your platform where you are writing, you can use them. Or if you are using your phone, you must be very careful as well in terms of, remember, when they say, uh, take a picture. I don't know what picture you are taking of yourself of the screen where you are or when your your proctor system automatically take pictures of whatever you are using. You just need to make sure that it doesn't show as if like you are cheating the system, right? Because if you open a template which is not part of your 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 uh, exam and your exam is not an open book, then it will reflect as if like you are cheating. Okay. And you don't want those kind of things. So, but we can discuss for exam, we can discuss the, the how you're going to take the exam. And I would already also have found out more from your lecturer in terms of um, the type of an exam you are writing, uh, what is allowed and what is not allowed, because I okay. cannot make that decision myself we get direction from your lecture to say what is it that we need to relay to you um otherwise there will be a tutorial letter for the exam where it explains everything in terms of what you need to be aware of what is allowed uh, whether they will give you tables and formulas and all that because okay. when you were writing or when students were writing a venue based or a venue based exam uh, the question paper came with certain tables um, and or came with all tables and came with certain formulas. And we had to make sure that we make you aware of which formulas you need to remember and memorize. Whereas now mm. you might not be given formulas because you are allowed to use whatever the the your yeah formulas okay. that you have at your own disposal mm. so those kind of things we can discuss them closer to okay. when we do the exam preparations we can always alert you in terms of things to look out for things to be aware of okay thank you yeah all right then enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you on sunday when we do question and answer please at least do your first attempt and then um yeah and then on sunday we can look at where you still are struggling with or whatever the concept you are still struggling with and then so that you can submit your final assignment remember also your assignment five 
also it's very important that you perform well on it so that you you get a good good year mark um uh, and those who have not submitted at least four assignments try and make sure that you don't skip this one so that also you get a good full uh, exam entrance mark because if you get less than 40 they might also not be allowing you to write the exam so it's very very important to submit all your assignments um, and make sure that you at least get more than 40 percent for your year mark to be considered um, the other thing you must also remember that in your exam if you get uh, your, a year mark of I, I'm not sure. I, I can't even remember now. Uh, when do they not? We need to. When we do the exam preparation, we will look at that. We will talk about what is it that you need to be aware of. When your exam mark will be used and when it will not be used. Things like that, because it's very very important to have a very good year mark so that you can pass with a very good final mark for your states as well. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. And happy learning. Bye. Thanks, Lizzie. Bye.